Hey, welcome to another off the cuff video. This is my dirty workbench, and we'll come right back to it, but I'll show you what we've been up to. All right, so welcome back to my dirty workbench. And I know by some standards, this isn't really dirty. I have two MTH O-Gauge Premier locomotives here. One is three rail, one is two rail. At least we should say one came from the factory as three rail, and one came from the factory as two rail. Well, in all honesty, they're very similar. The bodies or the shells are identical. There's no difference between the two different versions. They're both GP35s. The difference lies in a few things here. I've kind of outlined them. The frame, the wheels, the pickups, the couplers, the steps, and the handrail. And I don't know that you can buy these parts if you had a three-rail locomotive and you wanted to, to buy, uh, you know, like some handrails and things. I don't know that you can. I haven't tried. But I did have this as a two-rail that I bought. I had two of them of the exact same road number, and I wanted it to be black. But I didn't want to take the time to paint it. So I found a three-rail version. It was black. And it's going to suit as a donor, and I'm going to transfer everything over and make it into a two-rail version. So from the factory, the three-rail has the high rail wheels, the pickup, and the truck-mounted coupler in, in the steps. And here on the two-rail, you don't. It's got scale wheels. But they are identical, where all this stuff here will bolt onto that if you wanted to. So the biggest kicker when converting these from three-rail to two-rail is the fact that I haven't found anywhere where they sell these steps, and the steps go up underneath, you know, up underneath the uh, front of the locomotive there, and they mount directly to it. So in other words, it's not on the truck. But I have not seen where they sell these, and if they did, they could have cornered the market because I would have bought a lot of them. But the other big difference is the handrails themselves. This here is the, this is the three rail, and you can see it has a short down rail and that's so it can mount to the body now this this whole piece stays on the body on the upper part of the body it mounts in here and then here so for the two rail version since you have this added piece there this actually connects down to the bottom of the step same thing with the back and if you put them together they are different they are longer now i've converted that gp7 into a two rail version and i did not change the railings it doesn't look too bad but as you can see let's look at the rear railings here it's tough to say rear railings but you see the the uh, two rail version is longer so what i've done is i've taken all the stuff off of the two rail version painted it and i'm going to put it onto the three rail version to make it into a two rail version did you get all that I know it sounds confusing. So I know you have a question, and the question is, if you're taking this two-rail version and putting everything onto the three-rail version to make it two-rail version, what are you going to do with this one? Well, I'm either going to find some of these front steps, front pilot assembly, or I'm going to make a spacer, which I could put in here like I did with the GP7, and then mount it solidly onto the, the front of the, the body there. And I did that with the GP7, and it does not look bad, but I don't know, maybe trying to paint it red and, and do all that stuff, it might be tough, but I'm sure I'm up for the challenge. I'm going to strip everything out of here, just like I did with the other few of them that I did, and I'm going to put this TCS decoder in here. I'm going to leave the stock speaker in, because they don't sound too bad, and maybe later on, once I get the layout up and running, I'll change out speakers and do some super detailing and that sort of thing.
terrible. So let's see if it actually works. And again, this is just to make sure that we have all our wiring correct and we know it's good, so we're going to get started. So I made this little stand here, and that's going to hold that in place there. Be sure to subscribe, stay tuned, and share the hobby. This is Joey Ricard with TrackSideScenery.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.